So I want to talk to you about kerning. This is an introduction to the concept of kerning, uh, and our the second video is going to actually demonstrate to you how to do the kerning project. <clears throat> so typeface is designing a digital font. They build spacing into the font. They uh, add extra space on both the left and right hand sides of every single letter. Um, and they test this spacing. And testing the spacing and making it work in all possible combinations is actually about half the work of designing a font. Uh, it's a huge amount of effort is put into a good quality font. Um, they also uh, design what they call kerning pairs, where they specify if certain letters meet that extra space should be added or removed between them in addition to the side bearings that are already built into each letter. Now this spacing built into a font we refer to as metrics. And the metrics for a font are optimized for text sizes, meaning small size. And this is because if you are setting, for example, a magazine article, you're going to have paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of small type and maybe only one or maybe only a few instances of large type. So you don't want to have to be adjusting the spacing for the text, the actual body of the article. Uh, it's much better to adjust the spacing for the, your small, few small instances of large type. Case is uh, has its built-in spacing, its metrics, optimized for small use. So type often needs less kerning at large sizes. So here you can see that our um, up at the top is the word Bronx in our example typeface. Uh, with the metrics it looks very spaced out, very very loose. And below I've adjusted the kerning for this size. I've made it much tighter across the board. Um, so the example on the bottom looks much better to my eye. Now the thing is, if I, if I go back and I apply that kerning for the 128 point type to all the sizes, you can see in the smaller sizes it gets way too tight. Our 16 point size, uh, it's all crashing into each other. It looks, it's way, way too tight. Looks good large, looks, too, looks way too tight small. Um, so this is an important thing to remember, is that type size affects the kerning. So on the left is the built-in kerning, it's too loose at large sizes. On the right is the tight kerning, uh, which I optimized for the display size. It's way too tight at the small size. So here is an example where I have kerned each instance uh, based on its appearance at the size. So our 16 point type and our 32 point type, I just used the metrics. I left them alone uh, in terms of spacing. 64 points, I made it a little bit tighter. 128 points, tighter still. So this is each, each instance is spaced a little bit differently, optimized for its size. So in addition to type size affecting the kerning, the type weight affects the kerning. So bolder type is just going to look more tightly kerned uh, because the strokes are thicker and because they often, uh, often because bolder type has smaller counter spaces. Uh, so on the left is that, uh, that example with optimal kerning for the, the light weight of this typeface. Um, this is what I showed you in the last slide, that each size is kerned differently. And on the right is that same kerning, but I've switched the font to the bold weight. And it looks way too tight in the bold weight. Um, and this slide, I have adjusted the kerning on the right hand side, basically loosened it up just slightly for the bold weight. So uh, this is a small change, but look, I think it looks much better in the bold weight. Just a little bit more spacing. 
So when you are adjusting kerning, and most of the time your kerning adjustments are going to be for display type, uh, you need to think about the negative space. Now, you're already familiar with the negative interior spaces of letters, the counters, but you all now when you're dealing with kerning, you also need to think of the negative space between the letters. Um, and I filled that in in blue for you. It's a very useful mental trick when you're adjusting the kerning. Don't just think about the closest together points of two letters. Think about the entire volume of negative space between the two letters. So if you're just looking at the closest two points uh, from the bottom right hand side of the N to the bottom left hand side of the X, for example, you might think that that's incredibly tight. But you need to look at this entire triangle of space that is made between the N and the X. Uh, so you're not just adjusting from here to here, you're adjusting the entire area between the two letters. Uh, you're adjusting to optimize the entire negative space between each pair of letters. Um, and you also want to create a smooth even appearance. You don't want any two letters to look much more close together or much farther apart than any other uh, letters in the word or sentence or uh, line. And here's the negative space without the letters just to help you visualize it. Uh, I filled in the counter spaces here as green um, and it's important that you want to try to balance the counter spaces with the negative space between the letters. You want, uh, so, so it's not just the spaces between letters, you also need to take those counters into consideration. You want a balance. You want an even, as even a distribution of spaces as possible. Um, and this is hard. If our alphabet was entirely just made of um, completely square letters uh, that were all the same width and all the same shape, it, kerning would be easy. But our alphabet is not. Our alphabet is made out of uh, round shapes, straight shapes, uh, angled shapes, such a huge variety of shapes that this, uh, that's why good kerning is hard. It's really a little bit more of an art than it is a science. It takes practice and that's that's what you're going to do in this project. You're going to practice. So at the top, uh, this is this is these are uh, some examples of special things you need to do with round letters. Up at the top is the metrics. At the bottom, they've been adjusted, and I brought a lot of the letters closer together. But you can see, especially where the two O's meet, they are brought very close together. Because you remember, I'm not just thinking about the closest two points, I'm also thinking about the entire negative space between the two letters. Um, angled letters, like our capital A, our lowercase y. Again, you need to bring them much more, much tighter, much more close together, because they leave a huge triangle of space in between. So don't just look at the two closest together points, Look at the entire negative space between letters. Um, Vienna has an example. Uh, the capital V is angled in the other direction. And once again, we bring it much tighter, much closer together. But I can't bring it too close because then the, uh, the dot of the I will crash into the V. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. You don't want letters bumping into each other or overlapping each other. Sometimes they can just touch, but most of the time you want to keep the letters separate because if the letters start merging together, it can really diminish legibility. Uh, uneven letters like the capital T. Now you can see in the metrics the lowercase o is already tucked a little bit under the capital T. That's because the type designer already anticipated this problem and uh, set up a special kerning pair that when the capital T has a lowercase letter next to it, it slides underneath a little bit. 
but we need it to slide underneath a little bit more. So I uh, brought it a little bit further to the left, uh, as well as bringing all of the uh, round letters closer together. And Lisbon has an uneven letter in the capital L. Uh, and you can see that the answer here was to bring the L and the I very close together because it's not just their two closest points, it's the overall piece of negative space between the two letters. Uh, and then I also brought the B and the O very tight to each other because two round letters. Uh, now, in addition to type size and type weight, the actual typeface itself, the design of the letters, affects the kerning. So at the top is from the previous slide. The uh, word Lisbon, the kerning has been adjusted for Coluna Sands. To my eye, it looks pretty good. At the bottom, we have the same word, same size, different font. So this is the kerning from the example at the top, adjusted for Coluna Sands, which is our sans serif typeface up at the top, but it's in Hoffler text, which is a serif typeface. And suddenly our kerning doesn't look so good, especially the letters L, I, and S. They look way too tight. So this slide has up at the top our bad example of Lisbon, then at the bottom the kerning has been readjusted, uh, taking into consideration all these pointy serifs. Um, so there's more space between the L, the I, and the S. Uh, and it's a slight adjustment that makes a big difference in appearance. Um, and again, between up at top, Lisbon, Hoffler text, this is our ideal kerning, our optimized kerning for that typeface. If we apply it to Daisy, which is down at the bottom, it looks way too tight. And that's because Daisy has uh, that big, huge, vertical, serif-like structure on the L. Um, and it's also a very bold, very fat typeface with very, very small counter spaces. So um, up the top, we have our improper kerning, and down at the bottom, adjusted the kerning for daisy and basically just opened it back up a little bit because this typeface is so bold it just needed a little bit more space between the letters. So here are a few tips when you are kerning here's a few things that can help you. Uh, this is from Cyrus Highsmith's book Inside Paragraphs which is a great little book I recommend it to anyone it's not part of your required reading but I I highly recommend it. And he says you should kern in overlapping sets of three letters. So if you're kerning the word voltage, you'll kern VOL, then OLT, LTA, TAG, AGE. So that you already have the first pair, the first pair of each triad is kerned from your last triad. Um, this is a good way to sort of break it down and uh, uh, it's, uh, into uh, smaller pieces to tackle the kerning. Another tip, if you're having trouble figuring out if your kerning is good or not on a word or on a line of text, turn it upside down. Look at it upside down. Um, looking at it upside down for most people can help you uh, not read it. Uh, and just look at the forms and shapes and negative spaces. So um, this is a very helpful trick. <clears throat> now one side effect of becoming more attuned to kerning is that you're going to start noticing the way letters are kerned in signs out, out in the world that you walk around in every day. Um, and unfortunately there's lots of bad examples out there. Uh, so much so, XKCD did an online comic about this, you know, saying if you really hate someone, teach them to recognize bad kerning, uh, because you'll constantly just be seeing examples of it, and it'll be like that, that record needle scratching in the back of your head. Um, now, I'm not teaching this to you 
because I hate you, I'm teaching it to you because uh, it's something that you need to know to be a designer. Um, and believe it or not, becoming more attuned to all the examples of kerning out there in the world will help you. Uh, here's an example. This is actually on the campus of a school I taught in uh, out on Long Island. That O in the N, oh, it's, it's murder. And this looks like someone who just said, well, the O and the N should be as close together as any other letters. You know, if you, if you measure their two closest together points between the O and the N, they're probably mathematically as close together as the N and the K, as the serifs of the N and the K are. But of course, their overall appearance is that they're way too tight. Um, Thankfully, this wasn't the sign for the building that the design program was in. That building had a much nicer sign. Uh, this was the building next door. Uh, this is, was a train platform out in New Jersey, uh, and this always sort of drove me up the wall. It looks like two words, saint and back. And, and this is because the capital T is an uneven letter and the capital A is an angled letter. So in this example, you really need to bring these two letters much closer together to get an even appearance. Uh, the new Yahoo logo. This was in the news a couple years ago. Uh, I believe it was 2012. They redesigned their logo. And they, uh, they did this program where they used a new logo every day for a month and then on the 30th day they unveiled their final logo and a lot of folks in the design industry thought they would have would have been better if they had instead of designing 30 different logos if they put all that time and effort into really polishing up their final logo <laughs> instead but um, it made news, so I, I guess it wasn't all bad. So uh, you can see here it is in place on the Yahoo website. Uh, you'll see it in two places uh, in the top left, Yahoo in purple on a white background, and then um, closer to the bottom left, right above the Netflix logo, you'll see Yahoo uh, in reverse, white on the purple background, much smaller. Um, and you can see that even though the spacing looks sort of okay large here, um, once you start using it smaller, like in our top example, the H and the O are really crashing together. Uh, and then at the bottom example, the reverse example, the H and the O have, comp and the second O have really merged together into one giant letter. So I decided I would experiment a little bit with uh, adjusting the kerning. Um, so on top is the original, on the bottom I played with the kerning a little bit. Uh, so I brought the Y and the A closer together uh, because they're both angled letters, and also because the Y is not on the same baseline as everything else, I thought that uh, made it necessary to bring the A even further to the left. The spacing between the A and the H I thought was actually pretty good. Um, I left that alone. The spacing between the H and the O, I added a little bit of space, keeping in mind that it was uh, crashing and uh, looking way too close together at the smaller sizes. And I also added just a hair of space between the two O's, which is the opposite of the uh, problem that people normally have, where the O's are way too close together, or are not close together enough. They're actually too close here. So uh, small adjustments, and that's something to keep in mind whenever you are working with kerning, that often a small adjustment can make a big difference. All right, so that's your introduction to kerning. The next video will actually uh, demonstrate the, the, the kerning project to you.